In this video, I attempt to paint non-metallic metal for the first time. I'm not gonna go into detail as to what non-metallic metal is and why it's cool, and I certainly hope I do a good job, but this is the foundation from which I've started. And I consider this my best miniature paint job so far. So for me, the stakes are pretty high because I'm only half finished, and a non-metallic metal paint job on this figure is gonna make or break whether this mini paint job really works. This video is sponsored by the Everlasting Wet Palette 2, the sequel to the best ever wet palette now on Kickstarter. More info later in the video. This is a video of firsts. Not only is it my first ever non-metallic metal paint job, this is the first ever video filmed in the new Tabletop Time Studio. It's unfinished, it's a bit messy, the acoustics have not been treated acoustically yet, so it's, the audio is not amazing, but I'm just too excited to hold back and thought it'd be fun to film in here today. This is also the first time I've attempted to paint a miniature at a professional level. I say that with a big asterisk, obviously, you know, this is my first attempt. I can't claim that the result is that. Now this whole project started uh, actually way back in, I'm gonna say the first ever mini video on this channel. Dave and I did a bit of an analysis of a really cool mini that was sent to us by Angel Giraldus, who is one of my favorite ever mini painters. And I said, painting non-metallic metal would be one of those things I'd love to try one day. But also the mini itself was uh, a miniature by uh, Broken Anvil Miniatures. And they sent a bunch of really cool minis. And I specifically requested one from their website, which is this really cool orc that I just love the look of and wanted to paint one day. Well, months and months pass and I finish up a few personal projects and I feel like starting a new one. And I thought to myself, huh, I have that orc I wanted to paint and I decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna paint the mini I really like and wanted to paint even though I felt a little bit nervous about it because the mini is so cool and there's a part of every artist that feels like they might ruin it by putting paint on it but at the end of the day you gotta face your fears and do it so I started it. With this piece I did what I see people do rather than leaning on the shading process to be done with materials that do a lot of the work for you like shades or like contrast paints taking it region by region painting the shadow the shadow color and the, the mid and highlights those specific tones. The skin tone is where I started doing a base of a flat sort of murky muddy green just because I wanted to have a little bit of that warmth in there so I didn't want to go too green I wanted it to feel a little bit fleshy so it was almost as brown as it was green meaning there's just a bit more of that red in there even a little bit of blue which ends up creating a little bit more of a grey look but still you know green. Then slowly but surely I start to introduce the mid-tone colours and then the highlight colours and as I painted through the skin tones it became really helpful and really quite fun to implement a lot of the lessons I've seen people on YouTube teach but never actually tried myself. One in particular that was really useful is the tutorial on painting by Squidmar where he talks about highlighting in areas that are in the indentations like in the middle of the chest or between muscles because at the end of the day it's more about the region that faces the source of light rather than what is furthest in in the muscle groups. He explains it much better than me so I'll link to his video in the card and description it was really helpful and I feel like applying that to my paint job was a huge step up in my intentional ability to paint shadow and highlights especially in anatomy. So I got through the whole skin step with all of the skin tones of my orc done and then added in some of those extra features like the scars and the face details. And with that done, I was feeling really good. And, and it was really fun, satisfying feeling to know that I am painting the mini that I wanted to paint. It's working and looking better than anything I've painted or anything else. And it's looking better, at least in the regions I've painted so far, than it did before it was painted. It's a good place to start. Good encouraging feeling to have. Let's keep going. So next I painted the rope around the arms and the pants of the orc. And it's around these steps that I started to really feel uh, my first kinesthetic lesson sink in. And that is, it's all about light. When you're painting intentionally where light and shadow go, you actually have to make choices about the colors. Now that seems like a given to say that, but the reason that I really felt this is because I did paint a base color and then work my way up to the highlights kind of universally and it made it look flatter. So I actually had to go back and deepen the shadows in the darker areas on underneath the model, but also brighten the shadow areas further up on the model because the shadow areas closer to the highlight and the light source are gonna be lighter than even the light areas underneath the model or in the shadowed areas. I'm hoping that makes sense. Now that's not to say I applied it perfectly throughout these areas or the rest of the model, but really it's the feeling of knowing that lesson now from practice 
practice and trying to apply it that's going to strengthen my ability to do it. But even doing it almost or good enough is better than I've ever done it intentionally before. And it's a really fun feeling. So with the large areas of cloth and leather and skin all done and then moving on to the finer areas, just like the uh, stitching and some of the trims or little details, I basically wanted to paint everything except for what is going to be metallic because that is where the challenge is going to begin. My first time painting non-metallic metal. Now this is where things are gonna get really, really, really fun, especially because in setting up the new studio, Vallejo actually sent us the entire range of their fantasy colors and Oh my God, I'm so excited. Thank you Vallejo. And the best way to work with great paints is to work with a great wet palette because you can pre-establish your gradients and you can hold on to those colors and the mixes you delicately create so that they last for days or even weeks of painting. In fact, this is the wet palette that I've been using for my orc here. You can still see it's got some of the paint from uh, sort of more the leathers and some of the stitching and the skulls and stuff. Now, I've been using this Redgrass Games wet palette for the entire process of painting the orc so far. At the end of the day, I only get an hour, maybe two every couple of evenings to work on my orc and this has been a project for a few months. So being able to hold on to the mixes of colors for a week or two at a time is just incredible. And what's even more incredible is the brand new Everlasting Wet Palette 2 that they're launching on Kickstarter, which you can go check out with a link in the description. Now they've actually sent me a prototype to check out and show you guys in comparison to their previous Wet Palette and Wet Palette XL, which you can see size-wise is right in the middle, at least the, the normal version. They also have an XL of the Everlasting Wet Palette 2, but I personally really do like this new size of their standard wet palette. Having just that little bit of extra room really hits that Goldilocks point for me as far as the area I like to mix my colors on. But there is so much more that they're doing with the Everlasting Wet Palette too. Starting off with the most important things, their improved sealing system, so it holds the right amount of moisture and the right conditions for your paint to stay at the same consistency days at a time. And the new hydration membrane or wet palette paper, but it's so much more than that because you can't get this anywhere else. In fact, it's patented paper, it's reusable. So you can actually wash your wet palette paper and get three, four, five or more uses out of one piece of your hydration paper. And just like everything else as part of their wet palette system, it's specifically formulated to hold and keep moist the right amount of paint and water and hydration. And or I don't know how, it's a science that they've figured out and it's amazing. <laughs> and they've added the new feature of a slide locking system tray that is of a different size. This one holds contrast paints and washes of a Citadel paint size, which you can use as well as their standard dimple cup with your wet palette. They lock into place. So you're reducing spills, but you also have access to your metallic paints, your washes or contrast paints that you normally wouldn't use in your acrylic wet palette. So go check out the Everlasting Wet Palette 2. The link's in the description. I discovered wet palettes this time last year, it changed my entire world view of miniature painting. And since I discovered Redgrass Games wet palettes and I've tried them all, I have never looked back. Huge thank you, of course, to Redgrass Games for sponsoring this video. So I uh, had my playground selection of Vallejo paints to choose from for my wet palette. And knowing that the point of non-metallic metal is to create the illusion to reflectivity without relying on reflective metal pigments to do that for you, I needed to decide on what color the metals are that I'm working with and also what colors are being reflected. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm making really specific choices about light and how it's bouncing around here. So while I still am not sure on how the choices are gonna come together or what's gonna work, I've sort of decided to collect steelish looking colors and then a mix of gold colors that I'll use more as trims or accents, but I'm really gonna focus on a, a more steel and metal look. I've decided that it's gonna be reflecting a fairly standard blue sky above. So maybe some of the highlights or those areas will just have that tint of blue, but I really wanna lean into trying to make this look reflective. So I've gone for something pretty intense. I wanna reflect a really rich red arid earth and maybe some yellowy red grass that's on the ground. And to really help me understand how to do that visually, I created the ground with that little snippet of cardboard. As you can see, I just sort of mixed some of the battle ready bases that Geek Gaming Scenics make that really look cool and then mixed in with some tufts from Gamers Grass that work really well with that. I've got this little swatch of earth that I can sort of lean on and, and uh, keep referring to as I paint the areas of metal that are aiming down at and might be reflecting that earthy color. 
So I've got my wet palette prepared and my gradients pre-mixed and my earth swatch there to refer to. It's all there. Now it's time to paint non-metallic metal for the first time, which is why you click this video. And I'm sorry it took so long to get to it, but I really hope that the journey on the way to this dramatic and exciting moment has been as interesting to you as the result will be. I think part of me is also a little bit scared because I really love this starting point. And I don't know how the non-metallic metal is gonna go because it's my first time. Okay, deep breath, let's do this. I am gonna be honest, I was pretty nervous getting stuck into it, but I, I just thought I'd start off with a base color on my metallic areas, a sort of steel gray for the steel and a scrofulous brown for what would be the gold. Now I have to say, with those base colors mostly down, I was really happy with this as a starting point. First of all, because it made me feel like, okay, the worst part's over, I have put down color in the metal area, really can't get harder than that, right? And in the end, just painting with a single base color in all the metallic areas was really helpful to help me just wrap my head around how to approach this, but also feel confident in the direction I was going in. So I started off focusing on his foot. I really wanted to approach making the metal as reflective as possible and focused on replicating the ground colors in the areas of the metal angled down towards the ground. Now in the early phases of me getting used to painting in non-metallic metal, it was very much guesswork and I sort of stumbled my way through, but at the same time, it wasn't too difficult or confusing because I did pre-plan my colors and I knew how I was anchoring myself to the reflections with that ground swatch, which was, by the way, really useful. Highly recommend it. I went through the process of painting the shadows, in particular the reflective colors and the highlights and more of a slightly bluish and steely hue in the highlight areas in the one area, that front foot, as completely as I could at this stage and was really happy with the results. So much so that it gave me a huge amount of confidence with how to move forward with the rest of the paint job. Now, when I came to the mace weapon thing, I wanted it to look similarly metallic and reflective, but a little bit different in material to the rest of the armor. Not a huge amount, but just, uh, I wanted to have a different approach and just make sure I had a slightly different result. So I started off with a bit more of a wet blending approach, a really relaxed slop down of the color, and in particular, emphasizing the reflections underneath the mace. I thought it'd be cool to get a bit of a chrome effect on the metal, and I thought the way to do that is really emphasize the reflection, but also really amp up the highlights later which slowly but surely after putting in those red reflections in the lower areas, I really focused on making the highlights pop, which sharpened up and added detail as I went. This turned out to work really, really well. And I was also happy approaching it this way because I could relax a little bit painting the mace because it didn't need to be, in my mind, as neat and cool and metallic and nice looking as the rest of the metal because it's a weapon. He hits it against stuff. It can be a little bit rougher. So it took the pressure off. I got to try something different and I'm really happy with how that progressed. And by this stage, I have two armor plates left, his right forearm and his right shoulder pad. And it's by now that I really feel like I've got the process. So I'm going to attempt to take you through my steps of painting non-metallic metal that I have formulated through the process of painting non-metallic metal for the first time. <laughs> I'm gonna try and simplify this into a few steps. Starting off with that simple base color of tones that we set down there. Next, I really benefit from focusing on the reflective areas, not the shiny bits that you think, oh, it's metal, it's shiny, and there's sparkly light bits. No, the colors that are bouncing and reflecting through the metal. And in this case, obviously, it's that red earth. So I'm focusing on the lower pointing areas. Then the next step is the mid-tones, which are gonna be more the neutral color, but this time I'm just using it to blend in to those reflected areas and also build up to where I'm going to have the highlights. And then you guessed it, the next step are the highlights. These highlights really do make the biggest punch as far as it making look metallic. But if that first step, that reflective color reflecting in the metal isn't there, I feel like it would have a lot less impact and be a lot less convincing as a fake metallic look. So I would certainly emphasize focusing more on that reflective phase, that first phase and being most bold in that reflective stage, because this last stage of adding those highlights makes the most of it, but really is most effective because of the colors that we've bounced around on the surface of our paint job. All 
All right, I'm nearly ready to move on to the last phase, except that I noticed I had missed a few spots, which is actually a great opportunity to put my three steps into practice super quickly to sort of see how punchy and quick I can paint non-metallic metal on these weird discs. Starting off with that base neutral tone, then step one, our darker reflective areas with the color that we're reflecting, in this case, the reds, then onto our mid-tones, strengthening up towards the highlights, and then last but not least, some really sharp highlights. And you can see really quickly these random metal discs things have a much more metallic quality, especially compared to the ropes and the cloth surrounding it. Now, obviously I've gone through everything and added general highlights, but I'm gonna add one last step through the whole piece and all the non-metallic areas that I'm gonna call the super shine, trademark, copyright. And this is quite simply going through all of the areas I'm gonna hope look metallic and make them look as metallic as I can with near white highlights in really sharp areas. I'm highlighting some edges that are most in the direction of the light source, but I'm also occasionally adding just some little reflective areas that just sort of have a little gleam or shine, some little lines under where the cuts and nooks are, and overall just adding a really sharp punctuation to uh, the paint job to really make it stand out and have a lot more contrast than the rest of the paintwork of the mini, and to add that super metallic quality that I'm going for to try and make this look as non-metallic metal as possible. While it was certainly daunting to begin with, especially because I was so proud of the uh, initial paint job, I have to say the end result is something I'm incredibly proud of. Well, I can't say that yet because technically I'm not finished. I'm gonna do the base. And hopefully adding that earthy color and the reds, some of the grasses underneath him, is really gonna tie it all together and make it something that really works. All right, now it's something I can say that I'm really proud of. I'm gonna say, not only is this my favorite mini paint job I've ever done, like my personal best, which is really fun to hit that benchmark every now and then, but I'm really, really proud of not only having tried something new, but having the opportunity to apply the art skills and some of the technical knowledge I've learned elsewhere in my career to something so specific that I've really been eager to try. And I'm just really proud of it. I really hope you guys enjoy the result. I know I do, so that's that's obviously what matters most. But at the same time, I'd like to offer this as an encouragement to any of you who are interested in trying something like non-metallic metal. Maybe there's another technique you're interested in trying out but feel intimidated by. At the end of the day, sometimes you just got to hold your breath and give it a go. And it may not turn out perfect. It may not be impressive. But if there's anything I can say that I've learned through this process, sometimes you know you want something to look a certain way, but your eye isn't used to translating that into 2D or 3D. And I think because I've spent a lot of years training training my eye on how to create sculptures and paintings and drawings with reflective attributes, I was able to utilize that and put it to work in this mini today in a way I'm really proud of. And I guess the encouragement would be, whether you know it or not, the work you're doing, whether it be illustration or mini painting, it's all building your skills and more and more you'll be able to utilize those skills in some of the different tools and techniques you're gonna to wanna to try in future. I hope you have enjoyed my first time painting non-metallic metal and our first video in the new tabletop time studio though it is kind of unfinished and my first attempted professional quality paint job and to be honest it was really fun but also a little high pressure but I've also discovered how fun contrast paints are in the last week which takes a lot of that pressure off and it's really fun in a different way and oh my god I want to do so much different stuff with mini painting and I love this and this is cool so make sure to subscribe because I'm going to talk about all this stuff with all of my friends on tabletop time and with you to make some amazing content content moving forward so yeah don't miss out subscribe hit like hang around with us because we have fun here i'm still my heart is still racing um oh awkward sign off what do i do oh this is the first awkward sign off in the new space you know what that means dance party